Control Shift's calendars feature allows an organization to quickly and easily run a day of action or other grouping of events. The events included in this calendar generally share many common elements. They might have the same description, they might be happening on the same day, and they almost always share the same theme. For this video, we're going to walk through the member experience of calendars, how they find events, and how they become hosts. To learn more about creating a calendar and the admin settings available, please see our other help documentation. Supporters get started on the calendar's hub page. This hub page lists all events created in the calendar that have already been moderated to be fully publicly visible by admins. On the left side of this page, there's also the title of this calendar and a brief description. These are set by admins. As a supporter, I can scroll through this list to see the various events that are available in this calendar. I can also enter my postcode or my city to find events near me. This list will include location-based events that are happening nearby, as well as any virtual events that are available for my location. When I see an event I'd like to attend, I can click the event's title to go to the event RSVP page. From here, I can enter my normal attendee information to be added to the list of attendees for this event. If I search for my location and there are no events nearby, I'll usually see the prompt to host my own event. This is how the calendar grows, by asking people who do not have an event happening near them to become the host. If I'd like to become a host, I can click the Host Your Own Event button. Depending on the calendar settings, this may bring me to the organizer instructions page. The organizer instructions are specific to the individual calendar and are added by admins during the calendar setup process. This can be a powerful tool to help your supporters feel comfortable hosting an event. We recommend showing these organizer instructions and customizing them to your specific use case. You can include resources for helping your supporters run successful events, information about who they can contact if they run into any trouble, and you can also provide a brief description of what to expect on the day of the event. The information that you provide will likely make the event hosting process seem less scary for folks who have not hosted events in the past. The organizer instructions are optional, so if you don't want to provide this information, you don't need to. As the supporter, if this information sounds good, I can click continue. This will bring me to the event creation form. The event creation form within a calendar is the same as the event creation form elsewhere on the platform. However, within a calendar, you can specify default information for the events that are included. If you'd like, you can provide default text for the title, description, and start and end dates and times. As a supporter, I can keep the default text you've provided or I can write my own. Regardless of my choice, I will have to choose a location for my event. Calendars support both virtual and in-person events, though usually the events that are being created will be in-person. Once I've added a location for my event, I can continue through the event creation form. Within the calendar event creation process, there is one custom field, which is the event type field. The event types are set up by admins and are added to each individual calendar. Event types are used by admins to track the types of events that are being created within this calendar. Event types are also publicly available filters. So as a supporter who's looking for an event to attend, I can filter the list to only see the event types I wish to take part in. Once I've made all of my selections, I can click to publish. From here, I'll be asked to either create an account or sign into an existing account. Once I've signed into my account, my event will be made live. Depending on your site settings, the event host may be able to immediately start inviting friends and family to attend the event. However, this event will not show up on the calendar's lookup page until the event has been moderated to good by admins. As the host of a calendar event, I will have access to the same event host tools that I would have if I were creating any other type of event on Control Shift. That will include things like the ability to contact the attendees of my specific event, the ability to see the list of attendees of my event, and potentially the ability to customize my event's attendee form. For supporters, these are the two main flows for calendars, either finding an existing event or becoming the host. If you have any questions about calendars, or if you need any help setting up a new calendar, please feel free to reach out to the Control Shift support team.